Hi, welcome back to Mixed Media Creations with me, Creative Katie, Karen Burchell. Today we are doing an art journal tutorial. It's entitled Joy. And this tutorial is part of an art journal collaboration. Links to the other collaborator videos can be found in the description box below. For November, Christy picked the prompts and she picked the three colors, leaf green, burgundy, and cream. Love the burgundy color, one of my all-time favorites. The green, I'm not so sure, wasn't so sure about. Links to supplies can be found in the description box below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and select the option to be notified immediately when I upload a new video. So here's the prompts again. It took me a long time to figure out where I wanted to go with this. So I started off, I'm going to add some texture to my page. So I have stamped this foliage stamp on tissue paper and made my own custom designed tissue paper. And I'm just layering this on and I'm hoping to get some of the foliage coming through from the, from the very beginning to, on the top layer, peeking through, and as well some of that texture from the tissue paper. So I'm applying this with um, Mod Podge Matte and just drying it in between layers. I'm crinkling up the tissue paper. I want as much texture as possible. Now because it was just seemed a little bit too much in my face, too bright and bold, and I didn't want all that greenery, show, that foliage showing through, I just tried to push it back with a bit of white gesso and then I just take a baby wipe and I remove some of it in parts so you see some will show through a little bit more than others. Now depending on the gesso you may need to thin your gesso out a little bit too to get the effect that you like. So I have this crafters workshop stencil Harlequin and I just applied it with a palette knife, the light and fluffy modeling paste from the crafters workshop. And yeah, I forgot to hit the record button. So I'm pulling out, I've got three greens, I've got some burgundies. I just went through my various mediums, craft paint, Liquitex basics, what have you, rim coat, and I'm just pulling that out and I'm not exactly sure which ones I'm going to use at which time. So I'm applying a good coat of ivory or cream to the background and my hope is that there will be some of this ivory peeking through at the end. We'll see how I did. So I'm applying that and then I just want to add some interest and I want a little bit of brown in there. I want to kind of vintage this up a little bit. That's kind of the feel that I want to go with and some of that brown. I'm kind of applying it with a dry brush. Um, it's catching on the texture that's there within from the modeling paste and as well from the tissue paper. And that's what I want. I want that to come through. Then I have the this green and this is just Artist Loft brand. And I, you know, never in a million years would have I, I have thought that I would have bought this color. This was this is so not my normal color. But you know, as I do more and more creating, I find that I'm open to more and more colors. And I have another green here. I'm not too worried of trying to get exactly the leaf green that was in the prompts. I just kind of want the overall effect of that. And I'm applying this with a fairly dry brush going just slightly on top of the surface. This is just developing some interest and color in the background. Every once in a while I'm just stopping to give it a good dry. I'm liking how the dry brushing of the brown is bringing out some of that texture just all the more. Now one of the prompts that Christy picked because it is the flower of November and that's her birthday month, she picked the flower chrysanthemum and I am not going with a chrysanthemum but I am going floral. 
and instead of you doing my usual collage for florals I decided that I'm just I'm going to actually paint them on now before I think before I do that I grab my um, archival black ink and this script stamp and I'm just adding a little bit more interest to my background for me mixed media is all about developing that gorgeous interesting textured layered background so I decide that I'm going to try to make these very loose circular flowers and I was practicing with my finger um, prior to doing it on here I just grabbed my distress crayon in that burgundy color just to kind of etch out roughly where I want these to be but I'm going to use acrylic paint and I'm going to use the pomegranate seed it's a perfect burgundy color from the dilutions line and I'm not sure why I'd grabbed with a brush because before I've always painted this with my finger but then yeah I go back to my finger and I'm putting a little bit of ivory a little bit of the burgundy on there a pomegranate seed on there and just really going for a very loose circular flower I want this to be textured I want different um, levels of thickness of paint on there I don't want to overthink it I don't want it to be so perfect and the way the color mixes is basically giving me my my lights and my darks in the flower because this was fairly thick and gloppy paint in some areas it took me a while to to let it dry and I thought before I do that I'm just going to add some stems and leaves and I'm using this is hookers green it's just my the darkest green that I have and I just wanted that to show above the very light green in the background it's a very abstract flower I'm not trying to say this is a rose or this is anything in particular I'm just you know nondescript unidentifying flower because the paint this green is transparent you can see the text stamp and the texture come through and I'm loving that look And then giving it a very good dry now I'm doing the float technique with acrylic paint and I'm applying just a little bit of paint to the tip of an angle brush and I put water on the other end and run it back and forth and I'll put a link to the video where I show and teach how to do this and I'm just adding some shading to the leaves and stems and a little bit to the flowers as well with just black acrylic paint just trying to define the flowers and leaves just a little bit more I love using this technique if you don't if you can't do this or don't want to try you can use a stabilo all pencil or charcoal pencil and just shade those areas there's lots of ways of achieving a similar effect I like using this because the curl of paint it'll be it's permanent when dry just adding a little bit of these shading in the rose just to make it 
looking all the a little bit more interesting. And I can't tell you why I'm doing it, where I'm doing it. I'm just kind of doing it very instinctually. And I'm trying really hard not to overthink it. So I'm playing, I have some words that I cut out with my silhouette and I'm playing with them, trying to see if I like how it looks, but I'm uncertain which way I'm going to go. And I decide, you know what, I need to do some splatters so I get some of that Dilutions uh, pomegranate seed and I thin it down with water and I'm just splattering with a round brush. Different kind of brushes will give different splatters. Find one that works for you. I typically go with either this round brush, small round brush, or a fan brush to get the best splatters. This is acrylic ink, and it's kind of a coppery color, and it's fairly thick because I, I bought it. It was a discount, discounted, and I, I think it was just old stock. So it's pretty thick, so it requires a lot of water to keep it moving. And I just thought, oh, I'll do some drippage here. I am not the expert on drippage. It's something I keep trying to do, but I'm thinking I like how, the, how it would look getting caught in that texture above, the Harlequin texture above. And this gave it, gave it kind of more vintagey look as well as giving it that little bit of shimmer. And you know, if you know me, you know I have to have my shimmer. So then I'm just drying that. And you can see, as a result, some of the areas that were more the cream color have kind of gotten a little bit more brown. But then I decide I need some on the bottom to kind of balance it out. I'm just kind of moving it around and drying it, just hoping that it gets caught in the nooks and crannies. And drying it. So I got out my stamps. They're kind of grunge stamps, and this was from Recollections, the Michaels brand. And I'm applying black acrylic paint to it and just pressing it in. Now it's a little too grungy for me, so I end up going in and painting in the in the letters to make it a little more solid. And that's always an option you have, whether it's stamped properly or not. It just can give you the basis of putting that in. Burgundy was the color at my wedding and which we just celebrated our seventh wedding anniversary and we had burgundy roses. So this kind of, you know, is in memory of that. I'm just edging it with black to go with the black of the letters. And this is in a mixed media, my Canson mixed media. And this one is the, um, smaller of my journals. And I decide that I'm just going to get some of the black acrylic paint on the pad of my finger and just rub it on top of that texture just to kind of grunge it up a little bit more. I'm really quite happy with how it turned out. And as you see, I have a 
wet baby wipe there. If I end up putting a little too much acrylic paint on, I can easily get it off before it dries. So then I decide I still have some on the makeup sponge and I'm just applying it lightly on top and it's really catching in, to, in the texture and I love it. Here's some close-ups of different parts of this art journal page showing the texture and different parts of it. Absolutely love how this turned out. Kind of wishing I had done this on a canvas so it would be ready to sell, but <laughs> I didn't. Once again, please check the description box below for links to the other collaborator videos. Um, everybody's got their own unique styles and it's quite interesting to see how people take the same prompts and create some very different pages, canvases, projects,